What's up, everyone? Chief Sheridan here. Welcome back to another Ad Hoc OBI EE video. Uh, today, I'll be walking you through how to do a basic query and add some basic filters. As always, I encourage you to log on to the live site on your end and follow along with me. And you can see here, I've already started a new analysis for my home screen. And the subject area folder we're sticking with today is IPSA Soldier Analytics, current only. As soon as I start a new analysis, it takes me to my criteria page by default. So my criteria page is where I'm going to add my selected columns and build my basic query. When it comes to finding your selected columns, there's a few different ways you can do it. If you know which folder that column belongs to, you could drill down to that folder, or you could simply hit your search option here and search for that field. So in this case, I'll search for full name. And once you find your column you want to bring over, there's a few different ways that I can get it to my selected columns Dropbox. I can double click it. You can see it pulled over here. If I wanna get rid of that column, hover over my toolbar and select delete, or I can drag and drop it. If you're building a rather large analysis or query that has multiple columns and you just can't get it to work and you want to start fresh, on your right hand side, you also have a remove all columns option. So that will remove all columns from your selected columns Dropbox. I'll drag and drop full name back over. And if you hover over your toolbar again, you can see you can sort each column ascending, descending, you can clear the sort. You can edit your formula, which we'll get to in a future video, and you have column properties. So if you select column properties, on your style tab, I can change my font type, I can change my font color, my font size, I can make it bold, italic, I can underline it, strike through it, change the alignment of my text in the cell, I can add an image or even add a border. So this is where I kind of format the values inside of my cell. If I select column format, every column has a folder heading. So you can see this column's coming from personal data and every column has a column heading. This one's called full name. I have the option to customize both of those if I want. So let's just say I don't like the name full name. I want to name that column soldier name. I have that option. Directly below that on value suppression, if you're getting duplicate rows, you have the option to repeat those rows or suppress them. On your data format tab, you can override the default for that value. So if you had like a number that you wanted to change to a percentage, you could do that. If you wanted to change your text to an HTML, image, custom text, so on. In conditional format and interaction, we'll get into in future videos. Select OK. And you can see that soldier name has been changed from full name. So this is customized to my query and my query alone, I'm not physically changing the name of the column. Now, I know I mentioned that each column comes from a folder heading. So in this case, this is coming from personal data. So if you wanted to drill down to that folder, let's drill down to personal. And let's drill down to personal data. This is where that column is coming from, the personal data folder. So that's the other way you can find your column if you know where that folder exists. I'm going to add one more column. I'll add home UIC. And once you're ready to check the results of the columns or filters that you've applied, simply select your results tab. And this will show you the data that's coming across based on the criteria you put here. As always, we want to make sure we save our query. So select Save As.
and I'll just save this in my folders. So we know that our criteria tab is where I can add my selected columns, but technically you could still do the same thing from your results tab. So let's just say I was missing a column. Say I was missing rank. Same rule applies. I can just double click that. And that column will pull over to my report from the results tab. So you can see rank pulled over. So like I said, if you're missing one or two columns, technically you could add those from the results tab. But as a good rule of thumb, you do want to make sure that most of the time you're using criteria to pull over your custom columns. Go back to my criteria tab. And I'm just going to get rid of that rank. Now there are a few columns that I like to start every query out as a baseline. One of those columns is soldier active. What I found in release three is certain queries are pulling across inactive soldier records from my reports. So soldier active kind of sets it as a baseline or a fail safe um, that tells each query to only give me active records, right? Now, in order to apply some basic filters to these, so for instance, if I hover over soldier active and I only want to see active records, I want to come, come down to filter. And I have a drop down for the different operator IDs I can select from. You can do as less than, as greater than, less than or equal to, as between, so on. For this scenario will stick with is equal to or is in. And on your value, I have a drop down here, which will allow me to check any values in there that I want to apply the filter to. Or I have my magnifying glass search option. If I select that, I have the option to bring any values that I want over to my selected box. And you can see it pulled them across here. So if I set soldier active to one and select OK, you can see my filter has been applied, and now I'm only going to see active records. At any time, I can delete that filter, or no different than my selected columns, I can remove all filters and start fresh. So we'll just add one more filter to our home UIC. So again, I'll stick with is equal to or is in, and I'm going to hit my magnifying glass. Now, when you hit your search box, you have the option to search up here, but you want to make sure that you uncheck match case because otherwise it's going to be looking for a very specific value, uh, i.e. uppercase letters. So if I uncheck match case, and I'll just type in the first few letters of my UICs, you can see here, these are all my UICs that start with Whiskey Hotel. From here, I could bring all of them over. I can move all of them back. I have the option to select one by one and bring them over. Or if you had all of these UICs in a spreadsheet, you have your pencil icon here, and you could copy and paste a set of UICs over from a spreadsheet, provided that those values are exactly how they read within ad hoc. So copy and paste three UICs, and you can see I can pull them over that way as well. Select OK. And you can see this filter has been applied. So if this was my baseline filter, meaning I wanted to add it to every single query that I start, I could save this filter and simply import it to every new analysis so I don't have to build it again. In order to do that, 
On your right hand side, you should have a more options drop down and a save filters option. So I'm going to save this filter. And I'm going to save it to my folders and just call it my baseline filter. As soon as I save this to my folders, I should get a message that says there's a recommended folder they want me to save it to. So the recommended folder is for my profile under Ipse Soldier Analytics current only. So it's going to create this folder for me, and that's where my filter is going to be saved. Select OK. And now you can see both of those filters are included in this one baseline. So I'm just going to get rid of this. And let's say I just started my new query and I want to add my baseline filter. I come down to my folders. And now I have a subject area contents folder that was just created and an Ipse Soldier Analytics folder. You can see that baseline filter that you just created and no different than your columns. You can double click it. You should get a pop up message that says clear all existing filters before applying. So that would clear out everything in there and replace it with this. Or you can apply contents. And select OK. So now instead of recreating that filter, I simply pull across my baseline and it's there. So that's all I have for you on this video. Um, hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, don't forget to give us a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, if you have any questions of me on this video, go ahead and leave it in the comments section. I'll get back to you. Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Defend and serve.